Uh, hey, Matt, just uh, want to check in with you to see how uh, the off season is going and how you are, you know, a, a adjusting and working with Arthur Smith and uh, as a, you know, first play time as a head coach with a play caller and uh, Dave Ragone so far. How's that going for you? It's been going well. Um, you know, I think obviously transition requires a lot of effort and, and a lot of work um, to learn the new system to make sure that, you know, you're as comfortable as you possibly can be uh, with the terminology and, and you know, wh what they expect from you. There's always uh, differences, uh, nuance between, you know, different schemes and, and what, you know, certain coaches, um, you know, how they like certain things. And so I've been working really hard to uh, to try and get on the same page with them and been excited that we're able to to start and get out on the field this week and, um, you know, just start to get guys lined up, moving around and, and making steps in the right direction. But Dave and, and, and Arthur have been great and uh, I'm excited about, you know, the future and uh, hopefully winning a bunch of games. Yep. And, um, you know, I know others will ask about uh, Kyle Pitts and Julio, but uh, opting out, you all voted, some guys voted not to come and some are coming. How, how are y'all doing attendance wise with uh, the guys that are deciding to work out and come during the uh pandemic and the uh you know uh phase two of the program yeah i think you know we collectively bargained for it to be optional uh and voluntary uh, a couple of years ago and i i fully support guys making whatever decision they want to make uh whatever they think is best for them to to get themselves ready to go and so i think you know attendance wise you know i'm i'm, I'm fired up to be here uh for me i feel like it gives me the best you know opportunity to be successful but uh, I think for all guys, they've, they've got to make whatever decisions are best for them. And, you know, that's that's kind of been the case throughout my entire career, uh, to be honest with you. There's been guys that have been here. There's been guys that haven't. Um, but you trust the guys that are doing it on their own or uh, doing a great job of, of getting themselves ready to go uh, and in shape. And uh, I have a lot of, you know, uh, belief and, and trust that those guys will, will, will be ready to rock when it's time to go in, in July. Tori? Hey, Matt, happy belated birthday. Did you do anything fun yesterday? Uh, thank you, Tori. Uh, we took the kids out for an early dinner. They got some chicken fingers and uh, chilled out. So that, that was kind of it. But uh, a nice day spent with my family. And, uh, you know, they're more fun when you're in your 20s, you know. It's <laughs> fun having those birthdays when you're in your 20s. But uh, it was a good day. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, getting into my actual questions now, uh, how much did you actually know about Arthur Smith prior to to getting to know him now that he's come in and, and you've been able to work with him now? Did you know much about him before he came in? Uh, just just from a distance, having watched what what they did in Tennessee, you know, I have um, a bunch of coaches that I have I've played for have worked with him uh, and all all of them speak really highly, uh, you know, of him and uh, who he is as a person, who he is, you know, as a football coach, um, you know, so he comes, you know, highly, highly recommended from, from a lot of people that I trust, uh, but, you know, didn't know him personally, uh, but, but certainly, you know, knew him professionally and, and watched what they did. And they had a lot of success in Tennessee. He did a great job there. Wanted to go back a couple weeks to the lead up of the draft. At what point did you did you know that they that Kyle Pitts was the guy? Did did, did you have a heads up at all, or, or were you kind of waiting around like the rest of us? Yeah, no, that's that's uh, <laughs> those are not my calls, right? And and not under my job description. So you know, I leave that to the folks upstairs. And I was just excited, you know, found out at, at pick four, um, you know, that he was coming here and. Um, you know, he's he's worked really hard the first couple of weeks. Uh, I've really enjoyed getting to know him, but I was excited that night as well. Michael Rothstein. Hi, Matt. How are you? Uh, I'm curious about kind of with the draft, the fact that Atlanta didn't take a quarterback at all. Did that give you any sort of level of confidence or any sort of level of maybe comfort with where your future might be in Atlanta? It didn't really change my, you know, my, my confidence level or, or my approach in any way. I think that, you know, I, I always prepare, um, you know, every year as hard as I possibly can to give myself, you know, the, the best chance to be successful. But, you know, I, I, I've always felt that 
Uh, the people inside the building have a, a great amount of belief in me, and I have a great amount of belief in myself. But, um, you know, you, you never know how these things are going to shake out in the draft. You never know uh, what players are there, what players were high on their board, those kind of things. You can't worry about it. You know, to me, it's it's one of those things you just have to, you know, stay focused and, and keep your mindset uh, on the things that are actually going to help you, you know, play well in, in the fall. And that's what I try and do. Did you have any conversations with with Arthur or with Terry kind of about your status before the draft at all? Were any of those things discussed? Were you given any sort of idea? No, I mean, they they, you know, their job, you know, as as GM, as as head coach is to try and find the, the people that they feel are, are going to best help us win games. And, uh, and and that's what that's exactly what they said. And and so, you know, I had a, a lot of belief that I feel like I am that person that's going to help us win a lot of games. Um, but no, no, uh, not much more than that. Charles Odom. Just to, uh, hey, uh, thanks for doing this, by the way. Um, just to follow up on that, um, even um, even while you, you, you believe that um, the the leadership has confidence in you, you understand, I'm sure you heard that there was a lot of public debate as to what maybe those outside the team felt about the, the future at, at quarterback and, and whether it was time to to make plans for a, a different long term future. You've always been very um, um, pragmatic about things like that and, and accepting that certain things come with 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 age. But did that disrupt you at all? Did that upset you at all to hear all that debate and and going on leading up to the draft? Um, you know, not not really. I think that uh, you know, in, in one respect, you understand that if you play well for long enough, these are the conversations that are are going to come up. Um, you know, I understand I'm I'm not going to play forever, but I also you know have the mindset that I'm still playing really well and and have you know a lot of good football in front of me. Um, but the most important thing to me is it, it comes from the belief in the building, the people who are actually making decisions, uh, the people who, um, you, you know, are with you day to day. And so that's kind of where I try and keep it. It's harder now uh, than ever to, to avoid the noise. Uh, it was certainly easier earlier in my career. Just uh, there was less of it. There were less uh, ways to get it. But um I found that, you know, if, if you're going to search for it, you know, to try and get positive reviews on you, it's going to affect you in a certain way. And, and same thing if you're going to search for it in, in negative ways. And I, I try and just, you know, stay down the middle, keep keep my mindset on, you know, day to day, daily improvement, trying to be the best that I can be and not really worrying about what other people say. With, with no disrespect to the tight ends who have followed uh, Tony Gonzalez, um, uh, are, are there times that you still um, uh, look back at the special uh, gifts that he brought to the offense and, and now uh, you see the comparisons uh, that everybody's putting on, on Kyle Pitts? Is it, is it exciting to you to think that this might be somebody who, who can be compared to, to that kind of player? Yeah, I mean, Tony, uh, obviously first ballot Hall of Famer and, uh, you know, arguably the best to ever do it at his position. Certainly, you know, was the first guy to really change the position uh, into what it is now. And so, uh, you know, that's a lot to live up to. And I, I wouldn't want to put that kind of pressure on anybody. I think for Kyle, you know, the biggest thing is is to just worry about getting better and, uh, you know, learning the offense, trying to get a little better every day. Uh, he's got great potential, great, you know, uh, upside, but, you know, he, he's got to focus on daily improvement and, and trying to learn the offense as best he can. Uh, and, and, you know, if, if you kind of chip away at it, you know, slowly but surely, um, you know, the, the end result will get you to, to where you want to be. But there's no shortcut to it. And so that's you know, one of the biggest things I learned from being around Tony uh, is that there's really no shortcut to, to being the best at it. You know, you have to work at it. And uh, I think if he can do that, uh, that'll that'll you know set him off in the right direction. Justin Felder. Hey, Matt, we're, we're only a little bit into the offseason program, so there's a lot to figure out between now and when you guys get on the field. But what is an offense with Julio Jones, Kyle Pitts, Calvin Ridley, all the other playmakers you guys have? What does that look like in your mind? Man, we're, we're, we're really at the beginning of this. So, uh, 
you know, we're working on making sure we can get lined up in our formations, making sure that uh, we understand, you know, what routes we have on certain concepts. Um, I'm excited about the guys we have in the building for sure. And, you know, feel like there, there's guys that are highly competitive uh, that want to win football games. So I'm excited about that standpoint, but uh, we have a long way to go. And kind of going back to what Charles was asking about and then, you know, business decisions that come with the territory. There's also been speculation about Julio's future with the Falcons, how a move of him could affect the salary cap situation. Have you talked to him at all? How's he handling all of that? And, and uh, yeah, any, 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 you know, insight on that situation? Yeah, I mean, listen, I love I love who I mean, I've, I've been so lucky to play with him, uh, you know, for the past decade. And he's an unbelievable player. I don't get involved in 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 this side of it, you know, from a from a teammate, from a player standpoint. He's my teammate. You know, he's my guy. And you let the the, the other side of it shake out how it is. But I know this. He, he's always ready to go. Uh, he's an incredible competitor and, and one of the best to ever do it at at, at his position. So uh, he'll have himself ready to go. There's no question about that. Kelsey Conway. Hey, Matt, um, ever since Arthur Smith's introductory press conference, he really stressed that um, he's about bringing accountability to the Falcons. And he said he's going to make the best players accountable. I know you've only been on the field with him a little bit, but through the meetings, have you been able to get a sense that that's kind of the message he's going to bring throughout the building? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, you you, you get on 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 the meetings, on the Zoom calls and um, he's asking everybody questions, firing off questions, making sure, uh, you know, that guys are, are on top of what's being installed. Uh, and if they're not making sure that, you know, they know that, you know, it's, it's our job as professionals to, you know, find a way to, to learn this information and make sure we know it. And, uh, I think guys have responded well to that, but, um, I certainly think he, he's, he's made that felt from the beginning. I know you talked about a little bit of the differences and challenges about learning a new scheme, but just how different is this scheme and um, what are some of the biggest things that you're going to have to adjust to? I know you said it's the language, but I'm sure there's a lot more. Yeah, I think, you know, fr from a language standpoint, I think, you know, I, I've played in, I've played a number of different systems now. So uh, it's like, you know, a combination of a couple of them. And so I go back, the formations are really similar to West Coast formations, uh, which I played in for a number of years. Uh, protections, you know, very similar. Uh, the concepts are, are similar as well. It's just different, different names. So it's just kind of making sure that you have the right word association and, you know, you're speaking the right language. I think, I think the biggest, you know, difference comes from getting a flavor for, you know, how, they, how the coaching staff is gonna game plan. Um, you know, what the week is going to look like, how, how they're going to call plays, uh, situationally, what we want to do. Uh, trying to get on the same page as, as fast as you can there, I think, is, is probably the most important part. Zach Klein? Matt, it seems like the other 65 offensive coordinators you've had with the Falcons always talk about balance. Uh, but last year, you threw nearly 200 more times than you did your rookie year in, in your 13th year. Uh, is that just an evolution of the game? Can there really be a balance between passing and, and running in 2021 NFL football? I, you know, I, I think there can. I think, you know, one of the organizations that was extremely balanced was Tennessee. And we've got a head coach that is, is coming in, uh, you, you know, from that system. And so obviously they've had a, a different, you know, skill set of players there. Uh, different guys, but you know, I I don't know what it will look like. Uh, my job is is to try and operate whatever play is called. If it's 200 more passes than it is runs, we got to find a, a way to make it work. Um, you know, but I think you know most of the time teams are at the best when uh, you know they they make defenses defend everything, uh, run, pass, play action, pass on the move. You know, just a, a ton of different things to, to have to handle, but. Uh, we'll see how we shake out. You know, every year is different. You don't know how the injuries are going to go. Uh, you don't know how the season's going to go. And, uh, you, you know, you have to, you know, try and find a way to get it done. And what does a 36-year-old Matt Ryan in his 14th year appreciate more about the game than he did maybe as a rookie? Uh, I think, 
you know, it, it uh, you realize how hard it is, um, you know, at this age. And so you, you appreciate the success probably more now. You know, I've, I've never I've never really been motivated. You know, you want to win, but I really hate it losing uh, more, more than I loved winning. You know, it would eat at you more. Uh, and I think that only intensifies, you know, the, the older you get, you know, because you realize, you, you know, your opportunities are limited. And, and I probably appreciate the opportunity more now uh, knowing that, you know, I'm, I'm not in the first quarter or first half of my career. And, um, you know, and, and so it makes makes every chance you get, you know, all, all the more fun. Steve Weish. Hey, Matt. Um, hey, I just want to talk to you like, like on a bigger picture. You know, you see a lot more of these, uh, you know, quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson of the world kind of be becoming more empowered. But you're not really out there, you know, speaking about your, your contract situation or how much longer you want to be with your team. When you look around and, and see what's you know going on with some of those guys, how comfortable is it to kind of be in the situation that you're in? Like you said, having people in the building believe in you. Yeah, I think everybody's everybody's situation is different. I think they're, you know, I think you're correct. I think there's been a shift uh, for sure, you know, during during my time in the NFL, um, you know, where guys ha have become more vocal about certain situations. And, um, you know, I think that's a good thing from a player standpoint uh, is 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 you want some of that. You want it, your voice to be heard. Um, I, I feel like, you know, within our organization, you know, within the building that I've been in, I've been in a, a, a really fortunate spot where my voice has been heard. Uh, and I've always felt that way and always felt appreciated. But, um, you know, so I can't speak for other people's situations. I, I just feel fortunate that mine has been um you know, as, as solid as it has been for, for the better part of 14 years. And Matt, you just talked about also because, you know, you say there are limited opportunities be, because of your age coming up. How do you think this organization, you know, again, with this new leadership change has positioned you or the rest of your team to get you or is positioning the team to kind of get you to the promised land, so to speak, on that limited window that you just mentioned? Well, it's not that limited, you know. I, I know. <laughs> I feel pretty good. I I got a guy in division who's, who, you know, he's he's a little longer in the tooth than I am. So, uh, you know, I I still feel pretty good. I just understand it's it's not the first half. You know, we're we're probably into the second half a little bit more. But uh, to answer your question, I feel I feel like we're in a good place, and um, you know, we've got to improve. We've got to get better. There's no question about that. Uh, but I feel like we've got really good people in leadership positions um, with, you know, with with a mindset and, um, you know, a clear vision for for what they want to do. And, you know, it's our responsibility as players to, you know, you know find a way to be a part of that. And uh, that's what I'm going to you know try and continue to do uh, as I move forward. But I feel you know, I feel like I'm in a good place. Mark Bradley. Uh, Matt, if if Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith had come to you back in the early part of spring and said, we really have a rare opportunity to take a quarterback at number four. This isn't a reflection on you, but we think that planning our future, the franchise future, this would be the way to go. What would have been your reaction to that? I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, it didn't happen, so... Um, I can't really answer it, you know, honestly, but, you know, I understand that, you know, that's, that's part of this business. You know, it's, it's, it's not easy. This, it gets magnified at the quarterback position, uh, because everything does, but, you know, this happens to guys every year, every week, uh, in, in our league, people are brought in to, to try and replace you that are cheaper, that are younger, uh, you know, and it's, and it's your, you know, responsibility as a player to try and not make that happen. And so I don't know what I would have done, um, but, you know, uh, maybe that'll happen at some point in the future, but it hasn't happened yet. I know that uh, obviously you've you've enjoyed the total backing of, of this organization since the moment you were drafted. Did you have a little talk with yourself with the, with the new coach and the new GM and say, you know, maybe they won't like me as much as the other guys did. Uh, did you prepare yourself for that in any way? 
Yeah, I think you always do. I think you never know uh, when there, when there's transition, you know, what's going to happen. You have to go prove it uh, with the way you work, prove it on the field, uh, earn their respect. And I'm still, you know, for sure in the process of doing that. I'm in a fortunate position where they've got a body of work to be able to look at. But, um, you know, I, I still have to have to do that every day. And, and um, you know, so you're constantly having that talk with yourself about, you know, whether it's year one, year 14, you know, whatever year it is, you're constantly trying to prove that you're the right person for this spot. You know, I was told at a young age from some veteran players that in that locker room, you don't own the locker, you just, you rent it. And so, um, you know, I try and pay my rent on time all the time and, and do the best I can do to, to, to stay in that spot. Alex Glaze. Hey, Matt. Uh, so obviously, just kind of in a way to piggyback off what Steve was asking earlier about other quarterbacks around the league, um, you know, a lot of quarterbacks have issues with their front office not bringing in enough weapons um, for them to, to have at their disposal. Just when the Falcons are picking at four, was there ever a question in your mind whether they were going to go quarterback or provide you with another weapon? And when they you saw the direction that they went, just what does that tell you? Uh, about kind of how they view you and your future with with the organization. Well, first, you, you never know how it's going to go. Um, the the longer you you play in this league, you just there are no there are no givens, there are no certainties, and so you know I I, I didn't I didn't know which direction it was going to go at that point, but um, you know obviously I'm excited when, when you see a guy like Kyle get drafted uh, and the potential. Uh, that he has and the production that he had in college, you know, th those are the things you, you look at as a quarterback and you're like, man, I'd love to to play with a guy like that. And I've been fortunate, you know, throughout my career to to play with a bunch of guys like that. Uh, and they're fun. You know, they're, they're great to play with. Um, you know, the thing I've been impressed with from him is is just, you know, his his humility and his ability to to want to work uh, in the first couple of weeks. I think that's, you know, genuine, um, you know, and uh, I would encourage him to continue to to stay that way, because to me, you know, when you're constantly trying to get better and improve, that's that's the way you get to where you want to go. And uh, he's certainly off to a good start. And, uh, you know, obviously, Julio is a big part of what you guys do um, as an offense. Just what does a Falcons offense without Julio Jones look like? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. Um, he's been such a, a cornerstone of, of what we've done for a long time. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. That's a hypothetical. I, you know, I don't really want to go down that road as it's not really, you know, my business, but um, he's just been, he's been such a great player. He's a hell of a teammate. Um, I love him. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how things shake out, but um, he's, he's probably impacted my career more significantly than any other player. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been really fortunate to, to be around him for as long as I have.